that is the confidence that comes in the Quran comes from a, a different approach the certainty in acceptance of the Quran comes from exhausting the alternatives to explain it this way the book says it is a revelation if you don't believe that what is it you have to come up with some explanation you have a book it's paper and ink where did it come from it says it's a revelation if it isn't then where did it come from you have to have some explanation and the interesting thing is no one has come up with an explanation that works and in fact the alternatives have been exhausted because they basically reduced to this and it's been well established by non-muslims they'll tell you well the book if it wasn't a revelation either that man deceived everyone or somebody deceived him either he fooled people or somebody fooled him one or the other that's what the non-muslim says and they do an interesting thing they fall into two schools insisting on one or the other you have a large group of people who have researched it for hundreds of years and they tell you one thing we know for sure that man Muhammad he thought he was a prophet he was crazy but they're convinced that he was fooled somehow another group will tell you because of this evidence one thing we know for sure that man was a liar he fooled everyone these two groups never seem to get together in fact if you look up many references on Islam usually a reference will tell you both they may start by telling you the man was crazy and they finish by telling you he was a liar they never seem to realize you can't be both if you are deluded if you think you are a prophet then you don't sit up late at night trying to figure out how will I fool people tomorrow so they'll think I'm a prophet in fact a, a great deal of the Quran came in answer to questions somebody would ask the man a question and the revelation would come with the answer you see if you are deluded you think that an angel puts words in your ear then when somebody asks you a question you think the angel will give you the answer you're crazy you think that you don't tell somebody wait till tomorrow I'll have the answer and then you run to your friends that night and say does anyone know the answer this is a man who doesn't believe he's a prophet you can't have it both ways you could be deluded or you could be a forger it could be neither one you can't be both you can't mix them but I say what you have is one group of people who will tell you they assemble a lot of evidence and they say because the Quran is not a revelation we have to explain these things and they have a list of things they must explain and they say the only explanation for these things is the man was deluded he thought he was a prophet and another group of people say because the Quran is not a revelation we must explain these things and they have a different list of things and they say the only explanation for these facts is the man was a forger he was a liar he knew what he was doing but he lied these two groups don't get together to realize that you have to explain both lists of difficulties you need this excuse here and you need that excuse in this place but you can't have both to give you an example the kind of circle that people go in you ask somebody what's the origin of the Quran they tell you it came from the imagination of a man but then you ask him if it came from his head where did he get his information that is the Quran talks about a lot of things which the Arabs didn't know about if it came out of his head how did that information get in his head then they'll tell you well maybe he wasn't crazy maybe he was a liar some foreigner brought him the information so he lied he told people he was a prophet but then you have to ask them if he was a liar where did he get his confidence why did he behave as though he thought he was a prophet and then they have to tell you well maybe he was crazy he thought he was a prophet and they start over and go round and round in the circle as uh, I've illustrated the one point 
you have the information, like the wall of Bill Carnine. Who told this man about this place hundreds of miles to the north? Who told this man about embryology? And so on. When people assemble these facts, they have to assume that, well, somebody brought him the information and he used it to fool people. But now, if you assume that he was a liar, where did he get his confidence? Why is it that, for example, he told some people to their face what they would not say? That involves being convinced that you have a revelation. The Prophet had an uncle by the name of Abu Lahab, or that was his nickname, Abu Lahab. Here was a man who hated Islam, who used to follow the man around. He used to follow the Prophet around. If he saw him speaking to a stranger, he'd wait till they parted, and he'd go to the stranger and say, What did he tell you? Did he say black? It's white. That's how he thought. It was the opposite of what that man said. But about ten years before this man died, before Abu Lahab died, the little surah, which is called Lahab, is in the Quran, and it says of this man, in just these few words it describes him, it says, in effect, he'll never change. He'll never be any different. For about ten years, the Muslims could go to Abu Lahab and say, it has been revealed to us that you will never be a Muslim. All he had to do was say, well, I want to be a Muslim. How do you like that? What do you think of your revelation now? But he didn't do that. And yet, that's the kind of behavior you would expect from the man. He always said the opposite of what the Muslims said. See how dangerous that is from a human point of view. You're saying to somebody, you hate me? You want to finish me? Here, say these words and I'm through. Come on, say them, say them! But he wouldn't do it. In order to put something like that in your book, you have to be convinced that you really have a revelation. When the prophet fled from Mecca to Medina and he hid in the cave with Abu Bakr, they could see people coming to kill them. Abu Bakr was afraid. Now, if this man is a, a forger, somebody who lies to fool people he's a prophet, what would you expect him to say when he sees people coming to kill him? You would expect, he might say to his friend Abu Bakr, see if you can find a back way out of the cave. Or squeeze over in the corner and keep quiet. But in fact, what he said to Abu Bakr on that occasion was to relax. Don't, don't worry. He said, Allah is with us. He was confident. If you know that you're fooling people, where do you get this kind of attitude to say, no, it's going to be fine. So, as I say, you can go round and round in a circle, and people do. Because on the one hand, they may tell you Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the man was a liar, and Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they'll tell you that uh, he was crazy. And you, you can't have it both ways, but they need both excuses to explain the things. I had a minister in my home, that would be about seven years ago, and uh, we were talking, and the Koran was sitting on the floor with the... Uh, title facing down, so he didn't know which book it was. And uh, I mentioned, I just pointed to the book, I said, I have confidence in this book. Well, he looked, but he didn't know which book it was. He said, well, I'll tell you, if that's not the Bible, it was written by a man. So I said, let me tell you something about what's in that book. And in just three or four minutes, I told him a few things, nothing that I've mentioned here, it's something else, about what is in the Quran. And after three or four minutes, he said, you're right. So the man didn't write that book. The devil wrote it. So, which is unfortunate to have that attitude for many reasons. Uh, for one thing, that's a, a very quick and cheap excuse. There's a famous story that, uh, a report that the 